H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to the videos of H2K Infosys on Core Java. So in this particular video, we are going to see the concept of constructors or rather the practical example of constructor, what we have seen and understood as part as the theoretical concept in the last session. So let us go and open up the Eclipse. I have my Eclipse already opened. So in this particular uh, Project Explorer, I'm going to create a new project called as Session 24. Click on Next and click on Finish button. Say no to the perspective. Inside this particular project called Session 24, and within the source folder, I am going to create a package and I'll call that package as constructors package. And inside this particular constructor package, I'm going to create a class file by the name of understanding constructors. Call the main method and let us see how constructor can be created now first of all uh, let us create certain variables out here inside this class file global variables per se so I can create an integer x non-static global variable and integer y non-static and a static string type global variable called str and generally what we do is that when we want to call a non-static global variable uh, inside a static main method or any method which is static I have to create the object of the class file so let me also create methods for this particular class this class this is the main method so I can create another method out here let's say public static method and void return type I'll call this that method one just to show the example as far as this particular session is concerned and I'll basically give a CISO statement out here other a hard coding that this is method one body that's all and I'm going to create a another method which will be called as public non static void return type method and this will be called as method two and I can just use the printer and command directly to hard code it at this point of time this is method to body now generally what we do when we want to call the non-static method or a non-static global variable inside the main method or other any other method which is static okay we have to create an object of the class file so this is the class file name so I'll create an object of this let's say inside the main method right now I can create object in any methods as we wish I'll call this as um, u1 is equal to new the class file name followed by the parenthesis and a terminal sign this is the object of the class file called as understanding constructors now how do we initialize the object So I will initialize the object one right now. So what I am going to do is that 
to call the non static global variable x and y I have to initialize with the reference variable u1 of the object of the class file. So u1 dot x and the value of this should be an integer format. So I'll put this let's say as 100. And I can use SSO and just call u1 dot x. Similarly, I have to call the a non static global variable inside this method by the reference variable of this particular object so it is u1 dot y and the value of this let's say is 200 and i'll use a siso command sys out control space bar and then ui dot y and then precisely i need to let's call the static method method one so i can call it directly inside the static main method because both are static so control space bar I'll get that particular method out here similarly I want to call the non static method so I have to call with the reference variable ui of this first object so ui dot method 2 okay and this is the initialization of the first object similarly like this I can initialize another object sorry so I'll copy this and use a differentiator to differentiate the answers of these two objects in the console of Eclipse. This is out. I will put a star and then I'll copy this. And this reference variable will be u2 for this second object. So this is initializing the second object right now. So this will be let's say u2.x whose value let's say is 1000. And I am printing out this u2.x. Similarly, u2.y should be let's say 2000. And I'll printing out the value of u2.y. Method 1 and method 2 will be respectively called as their body is defined. Okay. And now we will run the class file after saving. So I'm getting the results for the first object and the second object respectively. You can see that. Now, let's say I have 1000 objects in this main method. That means what is going to happen? I have to initialize those 1000 objects respectively and individually. And that creates a lot of, you know, a lot of coding structure, a lot of codes have to be written because I need to initialize each object at a time. And that is a tedious affair and it's a mental game kind of stuff. So, this is becoming tedious so what we can do is that we can initialize this object by creating constructors now how do we create constructors okay so constructors are nothing but uh, are rather used to initialize objects and reduces the time to code and reduces the coding structure also so how does how is a constructor created constructors are not created within the main method body or cannot be created within the method one body or within the method two body that means constructor are independent of methods or functions they cannot be created inside the methods body constructor but should be created within the class file this is, this is the body of the class file so within the body of the class file we can create the constructor so what i'll do is that i'll create the constructors out here These are nothing but global variables. So I will write down these are global variables. So how do we create the constructor? So right now I will restrict myself to public constructor. That means I will use the access specifier called public. Public constructors or the public access specifiers can be used across packages. Okay, you might have more than one package in a particular project and each package can have its own class. There can be more than one class file in a particular package. So if you have a public access specifier used, you can use it across packages in any class as you wish. So I will create a public constructor. So you give the access specifier followed by the name of the class file is the name of the constructor. So I will just copy this and paste it out here. And followed by a parenthesis and then the body of the constructor. And let's say I write down sys out. 
and I just write down no argument constructor. Okay. Now after I have converted, created the body part of the constructor, the next thing that I'll do is that how does this constructor initializes these two objects? This is the first object and this is the second object. Okay. Now what I'll do first is I will have to comment these block of codes. So I'll use control shift forward slash and again a control shift forward slash for this. Highlight this and use control shift forward slash. So I have commented the initialization part of both the objects. Now if you see out here, this constructor does not have any argument. And I put the body as the body of this constructor has a print and command called no argument constructor just to make the concept of constructor understand. So if there are two objects out here, this, this is the first object of the class file. This is the second object of the class. file. Now if you see these two objects, these two objects that is does not have any argument pass. This is also an empty argument of empty argument object. This is also an empty argument object. That means if this is the object which is having empty argument and this is the object having an empty argument, it will automatically use this particular constructor because this constructor is also a empty argument constructor. Now, if I run this class file, you will see that this constructor is being called by this object that is the first object and the second object. Why? Because both these objects have empty argument construct, uh, empty arguments. And since it is empty argument, it will call this particular constructor because this constructor has an empty argument. Automatically, these two objects will call. So both these objects, object number one, that is this one, and object number two, both of them will call this particular constructor. So let us save the class file and run it. So when we run the class file, we'll see that the body part of the constructor is shown by these two objects. Let us create one more object for reference. So what I can do is that I will use a CISO statement and use the same, you know, star sign. And just create the third object and reference it by U3. So I'll copy it and paste it out here and reference it by u3 otherwise it will show you a duplicate local variable u2 okay now this is also an empty argument object so automatically this will call this particular constructor and throw out the body part of this constructor in the console so you will see that since there are three con three argument three objects out here all these three objects will call this constructor respectively and I'll get the result three times which is the same result no argument constructor no argument constructor no argument constructor so what happens is that my initialization becomes easier for the object okay now take the case of this particular uh, constructor who uh, oh, sorry get the case of this particular object which is initialized in this particular manner so what are you seeing out here is that it has it is uh, you want to get this uh, the answer in this particular manner whatever the answer version for the initializing of the object so what i can do is that let's say i want to get the answer like this so what I can do is that I can create one more object and this will be having the reference variable, let's say U4 and the initialization of the objects should be in this particular manner that we have seen for U1 reference variable. Instead of creating it out here, I will create the object out here. So I'll copy this paste it and I'll call this as u4 now for this I need to initialize the object like this so I'll copy this part 
this will be I'll copy this part for this object so this is object number 4 definitely and this will be with u4 so this will be u4 this will be u4 this will be u4 this will be u4 and this will be u4 method 2 i'll remove this part now there are this is the first object and this object is a empty object so this will call this particular constructor there is a second object which is also an empty object so that will this second object will also call this constructor there is a third object which is also an empty object no argument so this will call the no argument constructor out here now let's say this is the fourth object and this is the initialization of this particular object if i run it i'll get the result so let's say i change this value let's say to 10000 and 20000 respectively so i'll get the result for the fourth object in this particular manner this no argument constructor is coming for the <laughs> for the fact that this also has no argument the fourth object for this this value is coming you can see that it is referencing that particular constructor that is this one okay now let's say i will comment this particular code okay and let's say i'll pass on the values inside this let's say the value of x is 10000 the value of y is 20000 so i want to get the value like this which i have got in the console for this particular object so i'll pass on the values of 10000 and 20000 okay i'll go up now what is happening there is a red underline why because it says the constructor understanding uh, constructor with the argument of integer and integer type is undefined. So we have not defined any constructor for this kind of value. This is an integer value. Okay. This is an integer value. I have not created a constructor for this. So you see that I am creating this particular object. I am defining the values of this particular object directly. And it is not able to find the constructor for that. That means it is actually calling up the constructor based on the value that i am passing out here 